I'm gonna mute you until you're done eating your chips, because all I hear is the crinkle. Okay. That must be cow. That's not me, asshole. <laughs> 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 that was Tony fucking Thunder. Hey everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, and if you want to get your money's worth, stay right here, because you're listening to Knockouts and Three Counts. And remember, everybody's got a price the Million Dollar Man. This is Don West here, and I'm telling you, knockout to three counts is the podcast, baby! Make sure that's the one you check out, because buddy, like me, they're the real deal, baby! This is Jake the Snake Roberts. Just let me know. You need to listen to knockouts and three counts, or you'll see that damn snake again. This is the Ring of Honor World Television Champion, aka Shane T. Boy, the baddest champion you ever seen, boy. And you're listening to Knockouts and Three Counts. What up, though, everybody? This is Kyle, and you are listening to... I got some three counts. Like Tony Thunder said. Um, yeah, so this is definitely going to be a different episode than what was planned for tonight. Obviously, the world has been rocked by the coronavirus, and we're going to talk about how that's had its effect on MMA, pro wrestling, all that good stuff. Uh, Devin, why don't you go ahead and throw your social media out? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Devin63, that's D-E-V-I-N-T-H-E-6-3. You can find me on... Uh, Instagram at all steak, no sizzle. That's one word. Uh, make sure you guys join the Reality Era News group where we talk wrestling. Um, it, it's been some interesting conversations in there talking about, like you said, the coronavirus and how that's affecting the wrestling world, man. So, uh, yeah, yeah, join the conversation. Tony awesome. Thunder, throw out your social media. Uh, uh, yo, you can find me on social media on Facebook, Instagram. As uh, you can find me on social media, I'm Tony Thunder. And last but not least, you can find me at Detroit Knockout, Detroit N-O-K-O-U-T on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you're following the show at KO3CPod on Twitter and Instagram, KO3CPod.com, and see the full library of all of our episodes there on our website. Also, make sure you are checking us out on YouTube, Knockouts and Three Counts. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like button, rate them, leave comments, do all that good stuff, and make sure you're staying tuned because now that WrestleMania is out of the way, We've got to find the next adventure, so when we do that, stay tuned so you don't miss it. Um, so where do you guys want to start with this one? Um, coronavirus! Well, clearly the coronavirus, but uh, <laughs> why don't we start with the biggest one? I mean, when well, all this nothing first... bigger than the coronavirus right, right now. So, I mean, when all this came out, I mean, obviously, you know, there was some Tony, concern take the mask to off. it. <laughs> Randy being mean to me, y'all. He won't let me <laughs> be safe from this. Um, <laughs> it's not going to protect you from anything. Yes, so it is. the you know from when you. the coronavirus came out, man. I mean, obviously we knew it was serious, but I mean, I, I will come over there and lick you. <laughs> That's why I need the mask. <clears throat> Whoa! What the hell is no. going on here? <laughs> you need Randy to, is, this uh, is why you need to be watching the live view. Randy, Randy, Randy is, is feeling <laughs> Randy. Randy is definitely feeling Randy. Well, when the coronavirus Chase is Randy for the Randy. That's that's what I hear. But uh <laughs> when the coronavirus came out, I mean, I really thought knowing the way Vince McMahon is about oh, never man. canceling the show and the money that it would bring to Tampa, I really didn't think they were going to cancel it. So, I'd love to hear both of your guys' thoughts now that we we know it's been moved over to the Performance Center. What are your thoughts on it actually shutting something down like WrestleMania and the impact it's had on all the other sports? Uh, I feel like uh, it's 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 definitely uh, an alarming situation. It's definitely something that you want to open your eyes and wake up to because it's that serious. It's become that serious now that Vince McMahon himself had to pull the plug on something and you know make adjustments to what's going on. Um, that just shows the sh seriousness of it and um, how unfortunate it is that everything is getting canceled. And man, it's just a. Uh, uh, I mean, what what can you say about Not it? Not much you really can say. Dev, what do you think? Well, for me, you guys know I'm down here in Texas, man, and uh, working at the plant, you know, we it, it's it's been rough because we, we work six days a week down here. So I was really looking forward 
to uh, these next three weeks because we actually had the next three weeks off. So in that time, I was going to go to WrestleMania. I was thinking about going out to Vegas, uh, spending some time with, with some friends down in, in Florida. And basically, once they, they canceled the NCAA tournament, I, I knew – I knew it was all bad from there as far as sports, but that's kind of when it really hit me that, oh, this thing is like really actually serious. You know what I mean? Like we, we've, we've had these type of situations before. We've had H1N1, bird flu, swine flu, ass flu, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's like, it seems like these pop up every every two years, man. But like, like this, this, this one. But this time, this, this time they cutting checks because of how bad it is. Exactly. So. Everybody be safe out there, man. But uh, yeah, these next these next three weeks is gonna suck because that ain't gonna suck. I'm gonna be doing what I always do anyway, is sitting in the crib and uh, being an introvert, I guess. So the thing is, like, I mean, and Devin, like you said, I mean, we had everything set up to head down there, you know, and had grand plans for that, you know. But like, it's just crazy when you think about it now because it's like, look at the predicament we're in now. Like, I know you're not watching WWE, but just as a wrestling fan, man, think about it in this scope. For the first time ever, you're going to have WrestleMania that's still going to have all the matches that they were building up, but with no, you know, no crowd whatsoever. I mean, Devin, you and I were talking about it earlier. You know, when The Undertaker came out last night, it was weird. No fans, no nothing, but yet you've still got, you know, the smoke and all that shit. You know, now. It'll be a record attendance, man. Yeah, it, it's it's just crazy <laughs> the, though. How, think about the, that. The lowest, the lowest, the lowest attended WrestleMania ever, man. R- record attendance. <laughs> well, think of it this way: that's gonna be what a seven and a half hour show. There's no crowd, no like, dude. That's gonna be nuts. Well, I wasn't gonna watch it anyway, so that's that's. Yeah, we that. we know, <laughs> Tony. For someone else who I know would watch it, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Huh? Motherfucker. Man, look, man, I just said every fucking thing. Like, it's unfortunate. Like, what the fuck am I saying? Like, damn, this shit sucks. Like, it's going to be weird as shit. I know, but I mean, like, like, do you think it's going to fuck the matches up? Do you think that they'll still be as good as they should be? I mean, there's a lot of people who feel like the crowd reaction holds a a dominant importance into a match, and I agree with that. You know, I feel like uh, the crowd reaction does... I guess I can pull back current a little bit and say it tells a lot more to the story of what we're doing in the ring where we, you know, when you watch a match, the crowd reaction makes the match. Sure. So without that reaction there, it's going to be kind of weird to gauge how the crowd's yeah, in the I mean, match, you know, or how the match is going. Yeah. But I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure they're, they're professionals. They're going to know, you know, how to make the match interesting and tell their own story and, you know. I mean, look. Even with the promo that they cut on Monday, I mean, I'm still really looking forward to see what they do with this Edge and Randy Orton thing. I think that's still going to be cool. I still think there's some cool things to be on that show. But like I say, man, it's just a a totally different feel. And I mean, like, hell, you brought Stone Cold back and there's no people. There's no big ass. I mean, it it wasn't like it wasn't like, oh, hey, let's bring back Stone Cold when there's nobody there. No, no. But I mean, that was already planned. But I'm just saying, look how eerily weird that. You know, that is. So, I mean, hopefully this will all get cleared up soon. But, I mean, we're clearly in for um, history for sure. I mean, Dev, I know you weren't going to watch it. But um, for you, do you think that this is going to do any damage for WWE, like, long term as far as fucking up storylines or, you know, like, just any momentum? Well, I I doubt it because I think that's the reason why they decided to go ahead and go with it on the same date because – uh, it, it was a, r- a rumor going around that they were going to uh, push it back to June. I also heard another rumor that they were going to do like a super weekend and have SummerSlam and WrestleMania the same weekend. But you can't, you know, you've been planning these, these storylines since really, well, we say Royal Rumble, so January. You can't push it back that far. So that's why they decided to go ahead and go with the show. So, that, you know, mess with the continuity. But um, one thing I, I don't think a lot of people really think about is, you know, WrestleMania weekend has become like this huge thing. And uh, you and me, Kyle, we already had plans of, you know, hitting different events like Wale Mania, which has been canceled. Uh, WrestleCon has been canceled. Uh, Game Changers, uh, who actually supposed to have a show in Detroit this weekend, but that's been canceled too. But they, they had their, their uh, collective 
uh, events that was supposed to go on, and those have been canceled too. Like I've already started to get emails from from them about you know refunds and you know postponement and all that stuff. But um, like those, those WWE is going to be fine. WWE has all the money in the world; they're going to be fine. These are the companies that I'm worried about because right now WrestleCon and High Spots they're dealing with the situation. I don't know if everybody knows about it, but um, the Marriott where they you know, have their bookings that they don't want to pay out. It, it, it want to hold them to the money they pay to the whole the venue right now. So, so they're, they're kind of on the hook right now for over a hundred thousand dollars. And Oof. basically, the Marriott's been being dicks right now. Chris Jericho's already tweeted out about it, saying, "Hey, you guys know what it is. You're being dicks right now." Blah 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 blah. So, though, yeah, WWE is going to be fine, but it's it's the other guys that I'm kind of concerned about all right now. So here's one for you. So they've been saying that tomorrow night, you know, AEW Dynamite is going to air from an empty arena now too. So on the flip side of that, right. what do you think the effect is on a company who, A, is already, you know, just still an upstart, A, and B, as we've all seen, you know, they haven't had the best luck always, you know, filling up the arenas. What does this do? What do you guys think this does to them? Because for me, man, that – I mean, obviously, everybody's empty arena right now, so it might not be an immediate impact. Well, you know, speaking of empty arenas, what you don't want is an empty home. (laughs) (laughs) Tony beat me to it. And you don't want an empty home. And if you don't got a home, Stransky and Company is the way to go. Stransky and Company is the top producing real estate team that specializes in individualized strategy and over the top. Uh, service for their clients. You can find them at Stransky and Company on Instagram and Twitter and on their Facebook, Stransky and Company. You can also find all the links to all their social medias, uh, the email, all that, their phone number, all of that on KL3CPod.com. Make sure you check out Matt Stransky. And hey, they've got they've got the houses. You ain't going to be out here freezing and at risk of coronavirus. <laughs> check them out. Anyways, Tony beat me to it. Well played, sir. <laughs> I told, <laughs> I told, he totally like threw me off my shit. <laughs> like, but I don't know, man. For me, with AEW, I see this could go one of two ways. Either it could be harmful because they were having problems filling arenas before, or B, it could be good because you know maybe for however many weeks that they are having to do these empty arena shows. You know, who knows? Maybe they have another night like they did the night they had the cage match. And then, you know, where they get hot. And you get them hot for a couple weeks, maybe it'll help them fill the arenas once, you know, things come back to normal. But, I mean, I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are and what this does to a company like them. Well, as, as far as, like, AEW, I kind of put them in, in sort of the same situation as, like, WWE. I mean, yeah, they're not on the same level, but... They they've got money. They they just signed a, a four year extension or whatever. So I'm not I'm not worried about them. You know financially. You know crowds will come back once uh you know this whole thing blows over. But once again, my concern is companies like BCWA man. That, yep. You know they they run a show once a month. Um, well, BCWA and, will be and, fine. I mean, like I don't think the smaller like I don't think any level of companies is going to really suffer from not running shows. I mean, it's not like you're losing money by sitting back. I mean, of course you want to keep content fresh. You want to get content out there to your fans. So you want to have those empty arena shows and things like that, that these other companies are doing that can afford to do that. But uh, for the lower end companies that can't afford to put on these empty match arena shows and do all of that, um, I don't think they're going to suffer from not being able to produce content at the moment is I guess what I'm saying. Well, uh, I mean, I, well, I mean, I mean, like it, it's, it's not like you're, you're losing by sitting stale. I guess by being stagnant. I guess, but right. I don't think so I don't think you're going to go down the hole. For 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 an independent wrestler who has has bookings, you know, set for what we'll say three to six months ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You, you kind of you kind of plan on you know you plan on those shows for you know oh, money yeah, and getting sure. experience in the ring, and not not that these shows are basically all of these shows end up being canceled. It, it sucks for the companies and for well, it, it definitely sucks. Too, right? It definitely sucks, absolutely. 
But I don't think it's going to take anybody out the game. I don't think it's going to, like, anybody's going to go down a hole or anybody's going to, like, fall off and not be able to okay. recover because of this. But how about this, though? What about a company like NWA where they do their stuff all on taping? And since their new season just started, say this thing takes, like, I don't know, four weeks, five weeks before they start letting people come out and do their thing again. You know, they've already had to postpone the Crockett Cup. You know, if they got their next TV yeah, taping. <laughs> Devin was supposed to be there, but I can't ring the bell. We can't ring the bell because we weren't really there, though, because they canceled it. Um, but uh, right. how, I, how I take it back? Just all right. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you gotta press it to where it don't ring. And yeah, then... right. You gotta you gotta pick up the silver part and then pick it up. Oh, okay. But uh, what do you guys think it does to them? Not you know, what if account. what if hypothetically we get stuck in like a five week thing where they, you know, they don't let us come out like that? You know, what does that do for a company like NWA? Because I mean, yeah, they can keep going off their other content, but you know, whether it's um, the Squared Circle show or the regular NWA Power, with them being a tape show, that could cause a problem. Want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, man. All right, well, um, one, they, they were supposed to do a, a super show today, but they ended up having to pull that. And I think they aired like their uh, NWA 70 pay-per-view from last year um, <clears throat> instead of what they were supposed to show today. So they, they're basically they're having to edit the show on the fly and uh, basically move their content around, which has got to be a pain in the ass for them. But as far as like new content from here on, they can, I feel like they can do the empty arena thing. They, they film their show in a studio and, you know, they put it out on YouTube. So they, I feel like they can still go on without, you know, a crowd and it'd be weird too, but I feel like if they need more content, they can definitely, you know, film in front of the audience. And then, like you said, they have, uh, the, what's it? The square circle, the yep. circle square show. Just check yeah. out our boy from, uh, breaking down the ring. Mikey, he gave, uh, his thoughts on the last one. Uh, the last two, as a matter of fact. That's right. Yeah. So they, they I feel like they're going to be just fine because they're they're not 100% based, you know, they're, they're not making all their money off of live crowds. They, like you said, they do uh, tapings and uh, edit their content from there. So I think, honestly, they might be ahead of the game as far as, like, in, in a better situation than AEW and WWE because they're not a touring brand. They, they stay in the same place. Tony? I agree with that for the most part, yeah. It, it's just crazy to think about because these are things like, you know, at least in my lifetime, I've never really, you know, like taken into account, like, you know, when you got something that's that widespread that it's like, well, shit, there's a good chance, you know, we could all get it. It's just to what effect, you know, would it, you know. Well, Tom Hanks has recovered. Him and his wife are fine now. And that's good to hear because I've heard that and then, Obviously, they said it's more with like elderly people or people who have like a weakened immune system. But yeah, man, well, I don't know. I don't know if you guys heard, but it just came out today that Kevin Durant had. Yeah, I saw Kevin that. Durant. That sucks. Kevin but, Durant, Idris Alba. There's a uh, joke in there somewhere. Couple, with Kevin couple Durant, of NBA players. <laughs> Wait, probably, what was that? He said there's a joke in there with Kevin Durant. I said, yeah, it's probably not a good yeah, time. I'm not gonna one. do that. <laughs> Uh, well, you can say uh, I'm gonna say it's a positive view of Tony Leonard. No, 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 no. I gotta, do, I gotta make better life choices. So, <laughs> Tony, I don't know how much you've kept up with it since all this has happened, but Dev, I know you have because we were talking about it yesterday, dude. The UFC was trying to hold out just like the WWE was for a long time, and I was personally excited by this just because Dana White put out a press release saying that. They were looking for guys that would uh, step up and take short notice fights so that they could still fill these empty arena shows. Well, past guest of the show, Kenny Cross, his name has been on like the top 10 prospect list for MMA Junkie off and on uh, for a little while now. So I was like, shit, let's hope, you know, Kenny can get a shot with it. But then shortly thereafter, even MMA, you know, has. You know what I like about UFC? What about it? Switch the letters around a couple of words, you know. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what the What the fuck? Exactly, UFC. Oh. Tony Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Devin, Thunder. what do you think about the UFC? 
and well, how I don't know if I'm tired or if I'm just like I have I don't hey. know. Hey, well, you know what? I think I think you guys should go first on this one because I I've got a Wait, lot what's to the question again this. this time. The question is, you know, so they what the happened? UFC held out for oh, quite yeah. a long time for that, Man. and now they are affected too. So, how, what do you think that this does to the MMA game as opposed to the effect it has in pro wrestling? I don't think there's a difference, really. I mean, I think it's the same thing that goes for concerts, movies that's coming out in theaters. You know, I to me, it's, it's all like the entertainment game. It's all like it, there's subtle little differences, I'm sure, with like concerts and UFC and WWE and you know just different. Genres, I guess, there's differences, but it, like as far as the entertainment industry goes, what's happening right now is just uh, something that's just unfortunate for everybody. And you know, um, I don't think anybody really has the answers as far as to like what anybody can do at the moment. But I do know that uh, Tom Brady is now a Buccaneer. Yes, we, sir. We can right. definitely get into that too. Um, for me, why not? This is Justin Timberlake's no, favorite I just said we pro wrestling get MMA into it. and football podcast. Uh-oh, I guess we're adding, <laughs> per Tony Thunder, we're adding a third layer. Today. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, for me, it was crazy to watch because I wa- just watched the fight with uh, Kevin Lee. No, you didn't. Uh, from Detroit here that he fought at the it. UFC Apex. No, he saw it. It's, it's weird, man, because, like, all that was in there was literally there was Dana White, Mick Maynard, and, like, the judges and the athletic commission. That was it. And, uh, I mean. Is that 10 people? Maybe. If that somebody got somebody got to film it, I mean, somebody got to film it. They cheat. Either way, you know what I mean. It it was it was yeah, surreal to kind of watch. And then the thing is, Devin, I don't know if you've seen the fight yet, but everybody's kind of laughing because Kevin Lee. Yeah, I saw it. Look, I was had, I was hoping right. I was hoping he was gonna win with him being a Detroit boy and all that. He got caught in a nasty guillotine, taps out, and then quick tries to grab old boy and take his back. And I'm like, bro. You tapped, Tommy. <laughs> like, you tapped. There's no, I got nothing. So, I mean, it's just going to be interesting because the ones I worry about, at least on the MMA side of things, it's not so much uh, the guys in the UFC that I think will be affected from this or a Bellator or, you know, something like that. I think the ones that are going to be affected by this are the guys like Kenny Cross, like I was talking about, or the guys that were right, or Brett Martin, who were like right on that cusp of it. Yeah. Because now you can't fight on the regional scene to get you more fights to keep getting you out in front of them. And B, if well, the, I mean, it's, it's not it's not a personal setback, you know, it's, it's 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 a kind of a setback for everybody. So I don't think that anybody is going to be personally affected by this. The only thing you got to do is to like stay in shape. You know, I mean, I, I mean, like if anything, you get your things postponed and, you know, uh, you don't fight for that gap of time. But nobody else is fighting within that gap of time. So I don't think any, point. I don't think anybody's going to be personally affected by this. I mean, there are there are other things out there that, you know, um may have caused issues like this. You know, there's uh, kangaroos out there with <laughs> turtles in their pouches. What the fuck? In real life. And what the fuck does that got a damn thing to do with what he was talking about? Tell me. You know, all this happened be- after they killed Harambe. After 2012, the Mandela effect. No, listen, let me tell you. All right. So, no, listen. You No, you got to listen to me. All right. So. Okay. Okay. Listen, all right. In 2012, right? They say the Earth really ended, and we just jumped into another dimension. It was like another timeline on some Rick and Morty type shit, and it, and that's what made the Mandela effect happen. That's why a lot of people remember Sinbad movie when he was a genie called Shazam, and then Kazam came out, and niggas was like, "Man, I ain't about to watch Kazam. Shazam just came out. Why Shaq trying to be like Sinbad?" And then you know, what I mean, now you look back, and that Sinbad movie never happened. And, you know, you remember that. You remember going to, to the movies to see that with your cousin. You remember having it on VHS. But guess what? That shit never fucking happened. All right? So, you know, with this, um, I don't, what was we talking about again? How it affects M- the coronavirus. No, we talking, about, we, we talking about, we talking about other sh- crazy shit. Devin, give me your thoughts on what you think happened, what you think is going to happen with MMA. It's going to keep going. The wheels on the bus go keep going round and round, Kyle. How many times are you gonna talk about what's gonna happen because of coronavirus, Kyle? All right, we all know what's gonna happen. We don't fucking know. All right, <laughs> that's what the fuck. For, for those of you out there who have ever seen the movie Waterboy, speaking of which, kids don't smoke crack. That's for you, Tony. 
Uh, <laughs> Nobody laugh but you die. I, I know I laughed inside. I like I enjoyed it. But that was out loud. So though. here's what I w- that wasn't in silence. Here- You're a horrible person. Well, <laughs> I've been told that before. Um That's not so nice. Here's what I gotta say about the UFC, man. Fuck. Uh Dana Dana White's a fucking idiot, man. And I I'm trying <laughs> to get tired of it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there I said. Dude. The the card this weekend was supposed to be in London, right? No. Nah. Right. So, okay. <laughs> there's a travel there's, there's a travel ban right now, right? No. Well, to all parts except there's well to Europe except for one part. I forgot what, what that one part was. In other words, yeah, dude, you can't get there. Maybe you could because right. there's a part of Europe you can still go to, motherfucker. <laughs> but fuck. But here's the point. So you decide you're gonna try to move the fight here to America, right? But they're saying you can't have anybody in the building over. I mean, I can't have any more than fifty people in the building. So you can't really find a venue to have this fight. So, number one, where the hell are you going to have this fight? Number two, you got a bunch of people that the car was in London. You had a bunch of people from London that was on that car. And you're trying to move it to America, and they can't get here now. So now you got to find last-minute replacements in, a, in less than a week to try to get this car going. And you had people talking about, some, yeah, I'll fight, I'll fight. But here, here's why they were saying, yeah, I'll go ahead and fight. Because Dana White doesn't pay his fucking fighters. So of course they're gonna risk getting the coronavirus because they got fucking bills to pay. Damn. The UFC, the UFC has a huge problem with how they pay their fighters, man. And it's it, it started to piss me off now. Oh shit. It's part of the reason why they, it's part of the reason why I didn't go to that fight in Houston, man, because it's, it's it's just bothering me. You better watch out, UFC. UFC. You're gonna be on Devin's no watch list soon. I'm I'm kind of there with the UFC too, man. It's like, dude, you 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 sign these deals with Fox. You basically want to run this thing like the NBA, the NFL. Pay your fucking uh, fighters, man. And if if there's ever been a time for the fighters to start actually thinking about getting a union there, now's the time, man. Because they, <laughs> basically Dana White has shown you that he did not give a fuck about you, man. There are two people watching my <laughs> stream, Tony. Fuck you, Randy. Ugh. Embarrass me like that All right, I'm in front of our two. Hey. Don't embarrass me like that in front of both of our fans. Oh Jesus What's Christ! Wrong with you, Randy. Oh man. Anyway, like I said, obviously we do know, th- know. What were you gonna say? So do I even want to know what just happened? Tony was trying to encourage our viewers to uh, Randy, call in. Randy don't want our view- Randy don't want either of our viewers to call in. So it, it's I'll not put, a radio station. The call in numbers up, are for like <laughs> pre-scheduled guests, not randos to call in during the show. <laughs> <laughs> because call we can't Randy. screen these calls. Damn it! So <laughs> both of our fans, I like to thank both of our fans for listening to us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here's another thing. Hi, mom, so, Devin. Like you were talking about, you know, this has affected MMA. It's affected pro wrestling. It's affected everything. So. Here's the bigger question, you know, like how does that do you guys think everything just kind of picks up where it left off or yeah. how long do you think how long do you think realistically it could keep going like that where they'll keep doing everything with no fans or do you think it'll eventually get to a point where they say, you know what, this there there isn't a point for us to be doing that. WWE and AEW are in a different spot cuz they got the, you know, the deal with TNT and uh USA to where they got to put out weekly content, but I mean how long do you think realistically they'll keep doing these empty arena shows? Um, it's gonna be more performance center shows for WWE than it is uh, gonna be empty arenas. I mean, I guess you can consider the performance center empty arena, but I don't think it's gonna be like one of those things like, oh, hey, they're at the the, the, the Little Caesars Arena and there's nobody there type of thing. I think it's gonna be more exclusive to. Um, the performance center. I think they're gonna make it maybe look a little different to kind of compliment nobody being there. Um, but who knows? You know, um, as far as how yeah, long. Same, they'll... Same. Yeah, same thing with AEW. They're, they're doing their show from uh, it's called Daly's Place in Jacksonville, basically the Jacksonville Jaguars play. It's a little amphitheater they have, same place that uh, that little pay per view they had like in the summertime. Is yeah, that's where they're doing their shows from? So basically, they're quote unquote home base or performance center type venue. I like that venue though, man. Total. We don't do halftime no more. We don't do halftime. I don't know. 
What the Do fuck? Do we need a break? Uh, no, we don't. But uh, Tony just got up. Clearly, he needs more podcast juice. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. I mean, I like Daly's place. I mean, what were you gonna say? I was, I was gonna say, man. But like, dude, we nobody knows, man. Like, I don't know if the S S um, the CDC really knows right now how long this is gonna go. The government doesn't know. We're we're all just kind of guessing right now. Well, I mean, look at what we just saw in the NBA today, man. Like you just had Kevin Durant and three other New York, uh, Brooklyn Nets, all get the coronavirus. You know, you had Rudy Gobert get it. He gave it to dude on the Pistons. He gave it to two kids that were here in the crowd here. Like, I mean, this shit's spreading like wildfire. All right. So, like I said, man, we we I honestly don't feel like we we know how this is going to go, man. It's just one of those things we just got to play it out for as long as it goes, man. But let, let me let's just bring let's bring up something different, man. Let's let's, let's try to let's do it. Talk uh, as much. What do you got? Let's talk some some kind of wrestling, man. So we we kind of touched on it since October, you know, like oh AEW, how's it going? Uh, what are our thoughts on it, man? But I feel like man, it, it's been about what six months, almost six months since they've been on the air. I think I think we need to like finally make like uh, some some. Solid points on is this good wrestling? Is this a good company? Do we see them lasting? Man? All right, I want to know. Well, I'd love to do that, wanna... but since I know you've been predominantly AEW now since you've had your band with WWE, you tell me first. What do you think? What's your what's your scouting report on AEW so far? Well, one one thing is the fact that I, I was kind of worried that it wasn't going to last. But with with TNT committing to 2023 with them, that, in my opinion, takes a lot of pressure off of the the guys for you know uh, worrying. Oh, am I going to have a job? You know, I think that now opens things up for them to bring in some bigger name talent because they now they now know that hey, this isn't just a fly by night company. This company is actually going to be around for a while because you know they they now have a a long-term television deal, which was I felt was major for them. And they're going to be developing another show. So do you think so as far as worried about them, you know, being a, you know, a one and done type of organization, I think that definitely helps out with them getting the long-term TV deal. So Tony, the conversation was Devin wants to know what our thoughts are on AEW now that we've, they've been out for a little while. Like what are your overall thoughts on them as a company? Imagine if you had just stayed in the room and could have heard the words right out of Devin's Oh, I know, mouth. right? That would have been nice. Um, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I want to know what the hell what is so had, damn funny. No. <laughs> what had happened no, was see, Tony um, was so check it, right? the munchies. No. Nah. <laughs> I'm a Woken soldier. Okay, Um. so AEW is the shit. I like it. Um. <clears throat> it is what it set out to be, something different. Something to oppose WWE, but kind of compete at the same time, which is why you see the comparison in NXT, um, which gave WWE a chance to put NXT out there to a bigger audience. So that was cool, too. Um, I mean, I got my discrepancies with it. You know, I'm sure everybody do like they, you know, whatever. But over and all, go ahead, share with the class, man. Huh? Share your discrepancies with the class, man. Uh, uh. I will off air. I oh, love how you used to fun. tell me that I never fucking do that shit. And now he gets to get out of it without giving his fucking air and his grievances. Well, all right. Last time I checked when I was. Watching, I got my discrepancies too, man. All right. So check it. I do too. They had three faction angles going on at the same time. And two of them was like damn similar. Um, I don't like the. I guess the give it all in every single match because it kind of kills us for, like, now what? You see guys out there, you know, like, every match, like, every match, there's at least a dive. Main event got to be at least four or five dives because every match had a dive in it. And it's just like, you know, it's cool. It's like, wow. But, like, after the wow, like, now what? Now at the pay-per-view, you guys just did, like, ten dives in your last match. Now you guys got to do 20. Now we got to see 30 at the big, you know what I mean? Now it's for the title. We got to see 50. You know, it's kind of just like, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. I mean, um, it's got his audience. People love it. Um, I don't know. 
don't know how you guys feel about that. Dev, you want to go next, or you want me to go next? Uh, I'll go. All right. Yeah, I, the, the, I'm glad you said about the dives, man. That, that's one thing I'm like, dude, you, you guys can't just be sitting outside in the rain just waiting for someone to jump on you, man. I'm sorry. You, you got to <laughs> you gotta find something else. Man. You got to find another go-to, man. So the dives is definitely one thing that um, that bothers me. I give them credit. They, they've gotten better with their, their, their shooting shows and uh, their cameras, but they still have moments where they, they miss action. That that's, that's something that's that was a problem from the beginning. Like I said, they got better at it, but they still need to continue to improve on that. Um, I like the fact that they're, they're doing more promos. I just don't want them to go too far because then you start jumping to WWE territory where your whole show is promos. It's like 20 minutes of wrestling. I actually enjoy the fact that, you know, they do wrestle, but they don't want to go too overboard with, with the promos. But I think they're doing a, they have a pretty good balance of it right now. Um, one, one thing that I really, I think they, they really did, especially since the new year, that they they basically made storylines for people. Like before, it was all wrestling, but the storylines is what draws you in. I feel like they, they figured out that, hey, we can't put everything on being the elite because not everybody watches that. We need to put that on our actual television program. I also kind of feel yeah. like they're not pushing their biggest oh. stars. In what way? Well, at first they weren't. <clears throat> All right. Well, you would think Jericho is like the biggest star. Now you you got the people who argue that the AEW guys who came from the collection of Ring of Honor and New Japan and everything that the Bullet Club was doing at the time. Uh, some people argue about the whole: Do you make your stars or do you utilize the stars that you already have? Because like, how do you start off with? Right. You, you know, certain guys are already established. Everybody knows, everybody who watch AEW and everybody who knows about AEW knows who Kenny Omega is, you know, and right. his kind of whole ordeal of how he's been presented. For me, if I was a guy who never watched uh, anything that had to do with AEW and I watched it from the first episode until now, unless they're building him up that way on commentary, <clears throat> I wouldn't really know Kenny Omega was that guy. You know what I mean? Right. That's a fair point, but I think that's something that Kenny's always had to fight with having a good majority of his success being in Japan. Um, but I definitely can see where that would be an issue. But at the same time... Oh, 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 let, 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 let me jump in for a second. Cause I think, I, I, think I, I see where Tony's going with this, and this is something I was going to say, but I wanted to you know, give you guys a chance. But I felt like the, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega... All, all the big guys, I think they were, you know, hey man, hey, I think they were afraid to put themselves out there because people would say, oh, well, you guys started your own company. Of course, you're going to put yourselves over. But what you got to realize is that most of the fans that are watching AEW were fans of them and they were basically like holding themselves back. And now they're starting to put them, themselves out there more. And I think the matches are getting better. And by putting themselves out there, you can build up a guy like a, a Darby Allen, a uh, 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 man, Sammy Guevara, but my favorite guy, Sammy Guevara, yeah, uh, uh, Orange Cassidy. That's the guy. Check out our interview with you him need, on YouTube. Boom, bug. Yeah, but in order to build these guys, you got to have big name guys. So now you got Hangman Page and uh, Kenny Omega with the tag team championships, and they're putting themselves out there. So I think they were afraid to, that everybody was going to say, "Oh, you guys got your own company. You're putting yourselves over," but they kind of have to put themselves out there. I, I, I agree with that. So, like, for me, I think the reason why we didn't see as much from the Bucks and Hangman and all them is, like you said, I think they wanted to make it clear that their sole goal wasn't to make a company so that they could just push themselves over, which I think was smart in the beginning. But I do agree with you completely when you say that they, you know, it got to the point where they were shoving themselves down so much that people weren't liking what they were seeing, you know, on the top to a degree. Um, for me... Some of the things that I still think they need to work on are, A, some of the missed camera shots get me sometimes because you'll see a dope move and they just don't they don't catch it in the right way or, like, you'll only see, like, the end of it. Little shit like that. Right. Or, like, the other thing uh, for me is I love seeing a lot of the aerial stuff. Like, I love watching Will Ospreay, all those guys. But 
my problem when you have too much of it is the same problem I had when we did uh, the Russell Kingdom show, which you can also find on YouTube, Facebook, all that good stuff. When things become to where it looks like you're going like spot, 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 and like it seems like it becomes choreographed because you're doing so much flip shit that it doesn't seem at least a tad bit realistic. Sometimes I feel like they can get stuck in that mode too, as a lot of other companies do. AAA, I think, does. Um, you know, obviously, like I said, Wrestle Kingdom in Japan, same thing happened. But that's one thing that I think AEW needs to work on. Uh, the one thing I will applaud them for, though, is I do think their storytelling this thus far has been great. Uh, I think the Cody MJF thing was done very well. I think the insertion of Arn Anderson to be with Cody is a good fit, and I think that it brings another layer to it. Um, I liked, I like, even though it's kind of semi corny, man, I like what they've done with the Dark Order because, I mean, they really have done a good job of not really making you like, well, shit, we all know the Exalted One's got to be this. You know, we've thought it's people that might be outside the company, but they didn't, like, point to any one specific person other than when they were trying to make you think it was Christopher Daniels. So, I mean, that's just me. I mean, I think they definitely need to work on the, like you said, they need to work on their camera angles or one for me. Two, I don't like when the matches are, like, too over-choreographed, which WWE has even had shit like that. Right. Like, real quick, one, one thing I, I, I really enjoyed that they did is like when something's not working, they, they kind of bail bail from it. Because that uh Nightmare Collection Brady Rose faction, yeah, the Nightmare Collection, that thing was not working. And they they was like, you know what? We gotta get out of this quick. Like part of that's because uh Austin Kong is gonna be uh filming the, the next season of Glow, but I guess it was like the perfect excuse for them to get out of it, man. So I'm I'm glad I that they like... realized, hey, this isn't working, let's change it now. I feel like that was too much like the straight edge society in a way, like with the way they brought in Serena and shit like that. And like, I don't know, man, I just never really was able to get with it. I think Brandy and Kong would have been better off. if They would have kept it Brandy and Kong. Um, I don't know. I'm where need they... Cody to make better tattoo decisions though. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> so now that we know that that's a real tattoo straight up, what, what are your thoughts on Cody's tattoo? Devin? Dude, I thought he had like a sticker on his neck at first. I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, somebody, I forgot who it was, but somebody said it best, man. Like, he, he's got a, a, a chest a tattoo, tattoo as a neck chest tattoo. And a yeah. chest tattoo on his neck. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. I mean, I'm sure he thinks it looked dope. I mean, fuck nah. it, as long as he likes it. See, but look, look, just... look, look, here's my thing, though. I don't think it would look that bad at all if he was tatted up. Fair point. Like if he was completely if, if tatted, he put it on his shoulder or something. Well, no, no, no. Like think about if he was completely tatted, like um, uh, like a Tommy and um, Alistair Black. Alistair Black. Like, let's say he was he was he was tatted up like Alistair Black, and he had that there. It wouldn't look that bad because he, he's all tatted up. You know what I mean? But like, you look at it he now, and he got out, nothing man. but just that <laughs> neck tattoo. It looks, whoa, whoa. When I first seen it, I was like, what the fuck is? <laughs> Wow! Yeah, that shit's crazy. I'm, I'm thinking he had like a turtleneck on or something, or uh, he had a sticker on his thing. Like, what is? I'm gonna that? tell you, it was like the same reaction when I saw Mike Tyson face tattoo. It was like, yo, what the fuck? For real? Wow! Yo, so I'm sure it'll grow on me though. Like, it'll become like a Mike Tyson type thing. Where like now you look at Mike Tyson, you see his face tattoo. It's like not bad. Yo, like, like so. What, no disrespect to the artist who did it, but I'm not gonna hold you up. When I was watching it, I swear I thought it was like a tattoo that they'd had made, like one of them that you just like press on, or it was like a henna. Because at first it looked like when he was doing moves, it looked like the shit was kind of like coming off, sort of. And I'm like, right. I'm like, okay, so is it a fake tattoo? Is it a real tattoo? And I was watching it with a bunch of people, and everybody was, we were all saying the same thing, like, damn, is it really real or not? And then I happened to look at Instagram. Oh, no, it's real. Like, right uh, as the match is going, I'm like, no shit. This is really, <laughs> this is really real. I, I, I do. It, it, it honestly took away from the match for me, man. Like, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Fuck you, man. No more <laughs> tattoos unless Devin approves them. <laughs> That's wild. Well, for real, yo. I I mean that should look that should look weird to me. Like, no, it, it no, it definitely did. And just based off of how Tony answered the question, 
I want to hear every, well, fuck, damn it, Devin, you don't, you're not watching WWE again. So, Tony, I guess this question is directed directly towards you. Well, I know this is about to be a great question because I know you're going to ask me something about John Cena's promo. I was going to ask you about Bray Wyatt. And oh, John Cena's about. promo. All right, so let me tell y'all something, man. <laughs> let me tell y'all something, man. John Cena is the GOAT, okay? John Cena is the greatest of all time in professional wrestling. He out he he out Hogan Hulk Hogan. All right, I'm glad you're not arguing that no more. Go ahead, Kyle. Look, I, I, I've got up. What you're about. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Look, Kyle. I've said this a long time ago. Like I had my beef with John Cena when he was going through his run, but I mean, there's no arguing the fact that John Cena is definitely one of the greatest of all time, he is the all right. and he's definitely shown that he's that good. What's the Bray Wyatt question? My question is. Now you've had him lose the title. You've had him, you know, now he's called out John Cena. You got all this. What do you what do you see for Bray Wyatt going forward? And what do you think about where he's at now? Because now he's lost that aura of invincibility. But I know you've got a theory which, if you pay attention close enough, it's made sense with some of the stuff that's happened. So it's made sense with everything that's happened. So you, you what you're asking me is to put my Bray Wyatt theory out there for everybody. I am. All right. So for those of you who watch WWE. And you see that The Fiend being um, kind of like a, a karma, a revenge karma for Bray Wyatt. And uh, you know about the Lake of Rejuvenation. That was the last time we had seen Bray before uh, him coming back and everything like that. Um, with him becoming The Fiend now, um, the, everybody The Fiend goes against turns into their a previous version of himself. He went against Finn Balor, and Finn Balor said, I am the prince. The prince has returned. He went to NXT. He's been more of the prince. Uh, when you look at Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins went back to being a whiny heel with a faction around him. Uh, you look at uh, who else he went against? The Miz. The Miz went back, and now he's teaming up with Morrison and tag team champions. Uh, he beat Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan cut his hair and beard off, and now he looks like the dragon. He's fighting more like the American dragon. His match with Gulak was fucking mind-blowing. Um, that, like... Everybody Bray Wyatt, everybody Bray Wyatt goes against turns into a former version of themselves. So with him going against Goldberg, he has no history and no past or nothing with Goldberg. So him beating Goldberg really wouldn't have made any sense to his character. You know what I mean? It would have made no sense for his character and what his character is doing. Now that he has his eyes set on John Cena and his history and past with John Cena and Cena's promo about their history and how everything came up and he felt like Bray was lazy and everything and all that. And you look now at what could possibly happen if John Cena loses to Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. You get the return of the Doctor of Thugging The Alex. prototype. You get oh, the shit. prototype. <laughs> you get the manhunter. Wow, now that's really taking it back. I don't know, man. Like, when I'll be the first to admit it, and I said it. When Bray lost the title, I didn't like it because it's not that I got any problem with Goldberg, but I just thought that if Bray was going to lose – especially when you've been keeping him undefeated. I just wanted to see it have a reason to watch, like a like there be a real reason to why, you know, he lost, like in the sense of. Well, Bray, Bray explained it more a little bit on Twitter when he said that he had no history with Goldberg, you mm -hmm. know, that he, he had nothing to give him to wanting to defeat Goldberg. He had nothing. He had no hatred, no animosity to power the Fiend to beat Goldberg because he had nothing against Goldberg. And that's what The Fiend is. It's a power of retribution. Right. You know what I mean? So if there's no power of retribution to defeat Goldberg, you know, he doesn't have that edge. No, it totally makes sense. So, My but, but like, even if, you, even, even if you look at that, it still took five spears and a jackhammer. You know what I mean? And The Fiend was still, like, coming with that mandible claw every time. You know, he wasn't dead until the jackhammer. And then that's, you know, even still afterwards, wait. he was gone. You know, it was the... Wait, wait, question. So... I'm not, not really watching, but I did see the clip. Was that a jackhammer or was that just a hip toss? It was uh, a jacket toss. It looked like. <laughs> oh, okay. It was a judo that... toss, actually. It was more like a judo. Yeah, it really was. It's a judo toss. It was almost like. <laughs> you know, Goldberg practices his judo well. Oh, yeah, you know but... your judo well. Man, all... they, they... what were you going to say? So... Let me let me ask you guys. Let me ask you guys, man. So you 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 seen Goldberg in that match, and then Goldberg didn't have, have the best match with Undertaker before. 
So how do y'all see this match with him and, and Roman Reigns going? Man? I'm going to tell you how it's going to go. Here's the simple thing. The crowd is not even going to be there now, so it doesn't even matter. But audience, uh, I guess social media expo explosion is what's going to happen. Um, when you look at The Fiend and Roman, if the idea was for Roman to eventually get to the title at WrestleMania as he'd been fighting for the last year and a half, going through storylines and not even getting a chance to go against, not even getting title opportunities. But now that he's worked his way up to WrestleMania to get in his title opportunity against uh, what would have been The Fiend, you would have had all of the Roman haters, all of the the cow peppers, the chaoses out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mad, talking smack, upset. Oh, man, oh, Roman's going to beat The Fiend. This sucks. So, you know, the best way to protect The Fiend in that light was to take him out of that equation. Now, you have Goldberg beat The Fiend. Now you got the fans upset that Goldberg won. Now you got the heat on Goldberg. Right. Now now it's like, oh, Goldberg shouldn't be champ, shouldn't be champ. Now Roman becomes champ, and now you're not as mad about Roman being champion as you would have been if no, you would have been the Fiend. I totally agree. It makes sense to why it did it. And, like, you and I have talked about it off the air. I mean, dude, like, they really kind of – they kind of backed themselves into a corner with The Fiend because if he loses at this point because everybody liked him so much, the fans are going to shit on it. But if Roman would have been the one that was in that spot and he would have been the one to take the title, he Okay, but even with if you, if you look at Fiend's character in Lake Rejuvenation and The Fiend having retribution issues and all that shit, uh, you look at the character and the story that's happening with the character. If he would have beat Goldberg, essentially that would have meant that Goldberg would have had to go back and start a new streak. I get it. And, and, I mean, and the fans would have hated that way more. Right, but I think I well, agree the, with the, everything the that you said. Fans. But I think if that truly is the route that WWE is going, I think they need to do a little bit of let and break kind of explain. Well, I mean, that. what what here's here's my thing though. Here's my thing. Like you you don't ex you don't explain the story. Not you ex tell the story. Well, you know what I mean. Okay, but, but no, no, because like you guys, you can't you can't explain a story that's being told. You know what I mean? Like you have to watch the story unfold for what it is itself. You know what I mean? But like uh, the best way that I can I can explain this whole oh, I can't really explain it. I really can't. I mean more than I already have. I get what you're saying right. and I will I, say I, I get what you're saying and I will say though the fiend and everything they've done with it is one thing. Well okay, this is what I'll go say. Why do people want such a unbeatable un fuck withable character with the fiend? Like was he is never supposed to fucking lose? I just think people really like the fiend, though. Wait, wait, I get, the thing, I get like, that, but like, is he want, never supposed want, to lose? Wait, wait, I didn't want when, when I was watching. I didn't want that, and from what I heard, Bray Wyatt didn't want it either. Now, I've heard from, uh, I'll say, a, a close personal, warm friend that Bray was furious about that that Hell in a Cell match with, with Seth Rollins. Like when I saw that, I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Like, there's not there's nothing you can do after that. He basically. Maybe you kill Seth Rollins' finisher, and you made this guy unstoppable. So it's like, so who beats him? See, my thing. I thought I thought that was one the, the, the biggest uh, mistake they made, and it's like, well, I mean, if, 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 you, if you, you, can't, you, you can't stop the guy. If you look at Goldberg's resume, and you look at like pro wrestling wise, if you if you look at it for what wrestling is, and you say Goldberg's won all these matches, he's beat all these guys, you put the politics and storylines aside, and you look at it, Goldberg's. Uh, repertoire, his 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 resume is a guy that is credible to beat the fiend. I mean, five spears and a jackhammer. I mean, like five spears for Goldberg is like holy shit. Yeah, no, and I and I get it. What I mean, I, wait, wait, Goldberg twenty years ago maybe, but this Goldberg who who damn near killed the Undertaker in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I'm, really? I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty sure Tom Brady ten years ago got a got a Super Bowl. Tom Brady from last year getting a Super Bowl, really. That's why I think him going to the Bucks is stupid. Like he, he ain't got the arm to get the ball. To Man, the look, 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 look. The, the point that I was just trying to make, metaphorically, was age don't really got shit to do with it when you're still a badass. Like, there's dudes out here doing things at an older age that are still killing the younger guys. I agree okay, with that. But when you, when In all jack, sports, I mean, look, 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 LeBron. Jack Hammer turns into a hip toss. You, you kind of got to say, hey, was this the right move? I mean. I'm not going to talk about that. On I mean, look, I'm going to put it like this. To me, I feel like if anything, it's highlighted one issue that I would like to see addressed with WWE as far as Raw and SmackDown go. We've all agreed that NXT has a lot better, at least in my opinion, and I would say Devin would probably agree. I feel like the stories in NXT have been 
overall better than what we've seen on Raw and SmackDown. I wish that when they have a, a character like The Fiend that has all these potential layers that you just talked about and all these things, I wish and I hope that that's what we're going to see and that's that they'll take these things and run with them. Not tease all this different shit that can happen and then just let it die like they always do. I mean, give me an example. I mean, he's got so many layers to it. He was he was built up really high the last time Bray was on his run when he had he's got the whole world in his hands and then that just that went gone too. Well, I mean, well, Tony, like you said, like how many people know about um, Bray Wyatt turning people into their, their former selves? I mean, people who watch it. I mean, is is I mean, unless you're not really paying that at close attention to detail like I am to like really understand the story of what's going on, you probably missed it. But like if you if you but if, that's what I'm that's what I'm asking. Are they telling that story on TV? Are they supposed to explain the story? That like it goes back to that. Like do you do you yeah, like of- it goes back to that. Like are you supposed to explain the story that you're telling? Like you tell the story. Like 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 that's kinda like when you're watching a movie and people are like, Oh, wait, wait, okay, he just walked into this building. Is is the is the, is the person still there with the building and, and what about the person that locked the building? How did he get the keys and the, the, it's like, yo, just watch the movie. The movie's not gonna explain how the fuck he just got into that building. You know what I mean? He may have had a key. He may have not. He may have broke in. He, the, the door may have been unlocked. Like wh- that doesn't matter. Sometimes, like just just watch the fucking movie. I mean, like I said, like it's, it's like with me when I watch movies, I can tell by small details all the things that's really gonna tell the finish that what's gonna happen at the end of the story. I'm one of those guys. Right. Like twenty minutes into the movie. This was gonna happen at the end, and I'm usually right like ninety five percent of the time because it's just simple storytelling, you know. Um, right, and, and and to be fair, I, I'm not really watching it, so I I don't I don't know. I'm just kind of you know going by you know what you guys are saying. So, well, I mean, not not, not really arguing. It's just like you know I'm trying to no find no no out, no no. So. Yeah, yeah, no Look, man. In other no, words, yes. There's a million. <laughs> there's a million different ways that this shit can go, but. It's getting to be about time for us to go home. And no, again, if you yeah, it is. Randy wants to stay. If you need a home, make that sure you works. check out Stransky and Company. If you need and, a home, uh, yeah, Tony, let them know one more time where they can find you on all your social media. Yo, you can find me on social medias shit. out there on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. I'm out there on social medias and Twitter. That's Tony Thunder. Devin, I was about to take my jacket off and get comfortable. Fuck you, Kyle. Devin is six three. I just Twitter, didn't want you to get cold. Bro. He's saying his fucking social media. You can find me on Instagram at all state no sizzle. There's one word. Make sure you join the Reality Era News Group on Facebook. And everybody, man, be safe out there in these uh, coronavirus streets. Put, yeah. your, put your mask on. Fuck it, mask on. Last but not least, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Knockout, Detroit N O K O U T. Make sure you're following the show at KO3C Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And you Make can sure find you- the Randy at the Randy. <laughs> you can find him at the Randy. Randy. Or you can find the Randy wow. at yeah, yeah. Randy Walker on Twitter. Yeah, you can find him at Randy Walker on Twitter. Make sure you're looking out. If you're on YouTube, check us out, Knockouts and Three Counts. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out all of our interviews from the past two StarCast. Interviews with DDP, Excalibur, I had too much of that, Brutus uh, Beefcake, Stormtrooper Helmet. Check them out. And, uh, yeah, Tony had too much Stormtrooper Helmet. And until next week, be safe. Help everybody out. Don't be an asshole and buy all the and toilet fuck your paper. Couch. Yeah, fuck your couch. Peace. <laughs> Our intro music is More, More, More by hey, Punch Dev. Deck. Punch Dick. Hey, Dev, hold on the line real quick.